Hi, this is Eric Dureck and welcome to Med Health Fit Commentary. Tonight, we're talking about the biological value of proteins. I love Dr. Mercola's articles on nutrition. Over the past year, he's concentrated on both general and specific nutrition topics from eating to supplements, especially protein powders. Uh, most people think it's an economical way and an easy way to get the protein that you need during the day, depending on the amount of protein that you would normally get through your diet. In many areas, people have very poor eating habits, and many should be on some form of protein supplement for their daily needs. For those who exercise, especially those who do strength training, they may actually be consuming too much protein, or maybe too much meat. This is another concern with the whole concept of daily protein needs. Dr. McCola gives a listing in his November article on some elements of protein. These elements are maybe what's good for protein powder and maybe who should have it, and I'll talk about these in just a second. They're all pretty good recommendations, and one that we're gonna concentrate on specifically, I'll talk about. He discusses the essentials of a good protein powder. Now, some of these things that are included in this article include GMO ingredients that are free from any GMOs, things that are cold processed to keep the nutrition in its more of its, uh, its natural state, uh, whey protein concentrate, not a protein isolate, which means that the proteins are stripped from their nutritional cofactors, uh, one protein thing that has to be naturally sweetened, that has to have a high biological value containing all the essential amino acids and micronutrients. It has to be easy to digest. It has to be free of toxic metals. Uh, now, number six talks about the biological value, and that's what I want to concentrate on tonight. This actually means how much of that food supplement gets into the system for maintenance, growth, and repair of the tissues. I actually think that BV, or biological value, is the most important elements of what was discussed above. When a protein contains the essential amino acids in a proportion that's similar to what the body actually needs, it has very high biological value. When one or more of these essential amino acids are missing, or it's present in very small amounts, that protein has a low biological value. The value of a protein is from 100, which is high, down to zero, and it describes how much is absorbed in the body. More precisely, it's a measurement of the percentage of the protein that's actually incorporated into the cells and the tissues of that human body. Uh, there's a table that I'm gonna talk about that talks about these biological value, like in proteins, eggs, the white and the yolks. The biological value of those is usually 94. Brown rice uh, has a biological value of 83. And believe it or not, chicken and fish have a BV of 74. This is grams of protein consumed. Beef and chicken are much denser protein th than rice is. So the method of obtaining biological value was first uh, designed by doctors Thomas and Mitchell in 1920s. Thomas felt that the BV of protein is largely dependent upon the, an accurate estimation of a person's urinary nitrogen content, in part because of the results of these metabolic experience, uh, experiments that he did in animals yielded a small amount of nitrogen within their urine. He calculated this nitrogen from these animals, and of course he got rid of all the systematic errors with regards to the amount of foods that these animals were eating. Mitchell's uh, research way back then opened the door for dietary protein nitrogen absorption science within the body. They're all based on his methods. So now I want to compare the BV of protein powders with two other types of proteins. The first is animal protein, chicken, fish, all that stuff, seafoods. And the other one is the master amino acid pattern, which is called MAP. This is an organic vegan amino acid supplement that, that's been on the market for about 10 years or so. And MAP boasts that the measurement of BV for their supplement is taken from a lot of research that's done on nitrogen utilization. They've measured the NNU, or this net nitrogen utilization. Um, what we need to know is the actual numerical value to put in perspective of how well a protein or amino acid supplement actually works within the body and the NNU allows us to do that. The problem with, as I said, with many types of organ meats is related to their own biological value, it has to do with the cut of meat, the fat content, how that meat was processed, how it was stored, how it was cooked, and how it was actually consumed by people. There are also issues in the status of digestion. They all come into play when regarding how much of the protein source actually gets used by our cells for energy. 
using the NNU, the ability to judge the actual utilization, is always constant. The issue is that organ meats and their NNU have a, a value of about 32 to 35, depending on the cut of meat. This means that a lot of toxic levels of nitrogen waste are actually hovering in the body at over 68%. In comparison to other sources, uh, it's even worse. The NNU for protein powders is about 18%. This is true of both whey and soy proteins. With such a low level of absorption and utilization within the body, the end product is there's high levels of nitrogen that are usually present within the bloodstream. This is obviously deleterious to the body, so it would be part of the equation regarding MAP is to shift the thinking of what we believe protein is about. For decades, bodybuilders have been drinking loads of protein powder and doubling up on chicken and fish to help their muscles grow. To their credit, increasing a person's exercise does enable the body to use a higher percentage of protein per kilogram body weight. However, even if you doubled the yield from supplements, you would go from 18% to 33%. That's nowhere near the utilization of MAP, which is essentially around 99 to 99.5%. It's digested within the first 25 minutes, and this type of nutrition would benefit someone with inflammatory bowel disease, people on chemotherapy, people with immune suppression, diverticulitis, and a host of other digestive dysfunctions. So looking at protein supplements over the last 75 years, of course, they've had some benefit regarding helping athletes and bodybuilders, but there was an awful lot of protein that didn't get digested. From a money standpoint, I would say that's an awful lot of protein that went down the drain. From a physiological standpoint, that was an awful lot of unused protein that went down the toilet. In terms of food, most people eat a good steak or salmon for the taste, and they're happy to get a certain level of protein value from that meal. They may not be as interested in biological value as bodybuilders, but the organ meats are promoted by school systems and through TV commercials as a great source of protein. So that said, it would be far better to give your kids a supplement such as MAP where you know that they're receiving the total amount of protein needs for that particular day versus feeding them something like steak or protein powders or protein bars that may not have that amount of protein at all. Many nutrition experts in America say that we're eating too much protein. Well, this may be true that they're eating too much steak, but they may not be able to absorb even half of what they're consuming. It's a waste of money and it costs more than just the price of the meat. It's the entire manufacturing process from farm to store and that's really wasted because of the fact that it's overpromoted as a health food. For better growth, performance, and digestion, I believe that MAP may be the best value all around for your consumer dollar. This is Eric Durack for MedHealthFit Commentary. For more information on the MAP supplement, log on to MedHealthFit.com and thanks for watching.